Casey's General Store is out with much better than expected quarterly results as shoppers ventured out of quarantine and into the company's stores. The 2200 store plus chain has also been shopping for acquisitions lately as it seeks to bulk up its business. Joining us now is Casey's General Store CEO, Darren Rebellas. Darren, good to see you as always. You make a, a big chunk of your business in, in selling, or you, at least you did pre-pandemic, uh, pizza slices, donuts, and other bakery items. What have those businesses been up to as the economic recovery from the pandemic continues? Hey, Brian, uh, good to see you again, and uh, thanks for having me this morning. You know, first, I'd like to, to say that uh, we just wrapped up a, a fantastic year uh, from an earnings perspective and a growth perspective, uh, set a record for uh, earnings per share of 18% from the prior year, set a record for EBITDA growth, and none of that could have been possible with our, our over 40,000 team members who are working really hard in our stores every day to uh, deliver on that great guest expectation that our uh, our guests have of us. Now, with respect to the food business, you know, we uh, we really had a, a challenge at the onset of the pandemic with uh, a lot of uh, self-service food being shut down early on. And uh, that gradually recovered as we moved through the pandemic. One of the things that really was a bright spot for us was our whole pizza business. And uh, a lot of people probably don't recognize this uh, fact. We're the fifth largest pizza chain in the U.S. And we saw that whole pizza pie business really accelerate uh, during the COVID environment, in part because it's just great product. And we've been known for that for a long time. And in uh, another respect, it was due in large part to the digital uh, emphasis that we put on the business. We launched our rewards program a little bit over a year ago, right before the pandemic. Uh, we have over 3.6 million members now, and that really gave us a platform to activate those guests and be able to uh, connect with them in a more meaningful way and really drive that business. Uh, so we saw uh, double digit growth in that, in that business. Uh, the morning day part that you re referenced with uh, bakery and coffee and that sort of thing is recovering now as we cycle through and see the economy begin to reopen again. Hey, Darren, it's Julie here. Well, as you guys are fueling people up um, with pizza and coffee, you're fueling up their cars also. And I wanted to ask about the fuel business because you guys, the margins are under pressure a little bit there as we see higher gasoline prices. Talk to me about that business and also what you expect in terms of demand from drivers as the prices uh, trend higher? Yeah, you know, Julie, we've uh, we certainly uh, were under pressure from a demand standpoint throughout the year. That demand is beginning to recover. We are seeing uh, commuters start to gradually come back to work. And uh, we had some positive growth in the fourth quarter from a fuel perspective. We're continuing to see that uh, moving into the first quarter of our fiscal year. Uh, but one, one thing that the industry has proven really resilient about is balancing the volume and margins to uh, be able to offset some of that demand destruction that we saw early on. And so we've experienced outsized margins. We have, uh, we have a fantastic fuel team, uh, both on the pricing side and the procurement side that has really uh, allowed us to differentiate our results from uh, competitors we see in our geography. And so we've actually had uh, one of the best years for fuel profitability that we've ever had um, based on that ability to execute and procure fuel more effectively. You know, Darren, we were just talking earlier on in the, in the show about um, Chipotle raising its prices in response to a tighter labor market where it also had to raise its wage to, wages. And I'd ask you about um, what you guys are seeing on the labor side and competition for getting team members, retaining team members, and, and how that's you know fed through uh, the income statement so far. Yeah, Miles, that's a, that's a great question. I think there's been a, a lot of press ar around the uh, labor shortage and uh, the challenges of labor. And we're certainly not immune to that. We've, um, we've had our opportunities to, to try to hire more people and, and wage rates are going up. And let's face it, uh, those costs have to go somewhere. And ultimately, I think the consumer is going to bear the brunt of that. Uh, in our business, we're, we're fortunate that we have a lot of different levers because we're really in three different businesses. We're in the fuel business, we're in the grocery kind of convenience item business, and we're in the prepared foods business. And so there's a lot of different places that we can offset those wage pressures, but we're, we're certainly seeing them. Uh, we've had uh, 
a, a national hiring event where we were able to close some of the gap from a hiring perspective. Uh, we're still working on that. I think also one of the things that will probably relieve a little bit of that pressure is that in about 10 of the 16 states we operate in, those states are going to discontinue the incremental unemployment benefits that, uh, that the government has been providing. So we think that will start to uh, um, make more people available uh, and come back to the workforce. And we think that'll, that'll help out the situation as well. Darren, if I'm correct, that hiring event you mentioned, you were looking to hire 5,000 people. Were you able to hit that number? No, we were just shy of that. We hired about 4,100 people uh, during that event. So uh, not all the way to where we expected, but certainly took a big step forward in the right direction. And we're, we're planning on having some additional events as these unemployment benefits start to, to roll off. We'll have different, more localized events. And we, we're confident we'll be able to close that gap. And lastly, Darren, one thing that caught my attention, uh, one of your competitors, although smaller, Sheets, is now going to start accepting Bitcoin very soon. Is that something you plan to do? No, we really haven't had any discussions about uh, getting into the Bitcoin business. We don't think that that's a, a real driver of demand for us, particularly in our geography. And so we, we offer um, all, all forms of other payments and electronic payments and frictionless payments. So we think we're uh, where the where the guest is right now and uh, providing those payment options, but we don't see Bitcoin, uh, at least in the immediate future. Not wrong with that. Cash is king. We'll leave it there. Casey's General Store CEO, Darren Rebella, is always good to see you. Have a good rest of the week.